It's so funny. Every time I'm about to go live, there's this little part of me that's like, ooh, am I sure that I'm supposed to go live? Because I don't really plan this. I have to kind of write it out, but I'm not really sure what's going to come through. So there's a little bit of hesitation. But I just found a little bit of that before I came on. Because I have some things that are coming to me. And this is a fun form to be able to express them. And so I just want to begin with a prayer. Begin with an evocation. And you don't have to close your eyes, but I'm going to. And I'm just going to call in the light. That whatever it is that wants to come through here, that whatever it is that wants to be conversed, that it just be filtered by the light of the love that we are. That life that is us, that breathes us, that's every living being, that that's a part of this conversation that we get to have right now. That this transmission is actually a way to help activate all of us, myself included. That we get to feel more, think deeper, and activate in a more true way in the heart of who we are in this moment through this conversation. And we say thank you for being able to have this conversation. Thank you for Facebook Live. Thank you for this way to be able to connect with each other across the globe. Thank you for this opportunity to connect right now. And we just say Yahoo! So what I wanted to speak about tonight that is really on my heart um, is multiplicitous. There are many different subjects that I wanted to cover. But the first thing is I want to be very clear that um, everything that I'm saying tonight is in the loving. And this is an expression that comes from a couple named Ron and Mary Holnick. And in the loving just means that's the, the space that I'm standing when it, I'm speaking. I'm speaking in the loving. I'm speaking in a current. It's like you step into a river and the water is rushing around your ankles, right? I'm in the loving. And so I am asking myself to filter what it is that I'm expressing in that way. So I just want to share that this is expressed in the loving. Um, the first piece that I wanted to talk about was hair. There's this really interesting movement I've noticed amongst women recently of shaving their head. And I, I'm all for it. Express yourself however you want. Cut your hair. Keep it long. There's all these different identities around it. But I just wanted to share my personal story. Um, when I was four years old, okay, well, wait, let's back up even more. This past weekend, I was cleaning out my final boxes. My family is selling our family farm and we've stored the kids, the grandkids, have all stored their stuff at this family farm in the barns. And we've had to go through all of our stuff and get rid of a whole bunch of stuff. And so this last weekend was the final weekend that I was going through my last boxes. So I'm going through these boxes just down memory lane, you know, six to eight boxes full of stuff. And they're full of scrapbooks. And my mom and I were the kind of people who kept everything that comes to sentimental use. And so we have every Christmas card, every birthday card, every Valentine Day card that was ever used. And there's this one page that I turned and it's the story that my mom is writing. And there's a piece of my hair or, or a bundle of my hair taped in to this page. And my mom starts telling the story of how when I was uh, three years old in preschool or four years old in preschool, how I snuck behind her chair and cut my own hair and she was so sad she cried it was a heartbreaking experience for her but for me I was giggling and I felt elated and I I can I don't know if she's just told me that story so many times or if I actually have memories of it but I felt like that was a really liberating experience for me so I just wanted to say the four-year-old version of me ladies is with y'all keep cutting your hair do whatever you want grow along cut it whoever does whatever the expression of our hair is each so available to be individual. It doesn't have to be these long strokes of this is how it's supposed to be. It's another form of identity that is ready to be dissolved, right? Whether it's long hair or short hair or male or female or whatever in between, this thing that keeps us tied to identity, it's nice to release it. Right? I think that some of the liberation that's coming with these women who are cutting their hair or, or even shaving bald, it's like this identity is not true. This gendered identity, this cultured identity, this idea of femininity or this idea of masculinity, we made it up and it becomes a box, it becomes a jail and we made it up, right? So we can remake it up. There's nothing inherent feminine, nothing inherently feminine about long hair. We made it up. And over time, we've reinforced it through our cultural beliefs, through our myths, 
through the stories that we tell of women with long hair and Mary Magdalene with the oils in her hair washing Jesus' feet. This is another myth that perpetuates whatever this femininity is. So go on with your bad self and create your own myths. Create your own identities outside of hair and gender. Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk about was man shaming. Man shaming. Hello, men. Is there any men out there who've ever been man shamed? I would love to hear if you have, because I know that I have been a man shamer. I have been a man shamer. I have spoken to my girlfriends about men in wide brush strokes. All men are like this. Um, and in the spiritual community, I hear it talked about as the masculine or the patriarchy or the shadow masculine. And I really want to invite forward that this shit isn't cool. <laughs> there are things that we need to call in for sure. And there is a way I believe that we can do this with grace and beauty. But I first want to start by apologizing to any men that I have directly or indirectly man shamed. I've spoken about you poorly about your behind your back. I've had different experiences with men in my life and I've lumped you all into one category at different points in my life. I believe I have not done that recently. However, the current man that I am dating, I'm not sure if that's the right term, that I'm in love with, the current man that I'm in love with has brought to my attention that I still have the tendency to do some broad strokes when it comes to men and I've referred to him even in that category. So even if there are tendencies amongst certain types of gendered people, I'm really challenging myself right now to work with individuals and also if there is a larger system at play, is me shaming anyone going to help bring that forward? Is me shaming anyone going to help bring that forward or is it just going to cause them to feel shame? And when people feel shame, they go into aggression. And guess what is the characteristic that we are already critiquing from men and the masculine? It's aggression. So when I add shame on top of that, it's like I am inviting that very energy into my field. Now, I'm not saying that I am inviting men to get angry and whatnot. I'm just pointing out that there is a cycle, that there is a uh, feedback loop with how we project our pain on people. When I project my pain in this example on men, what happens is that feedback loop comes back to me in their shadow side, whatever that may be. It may be like the masculine or maybe like other men or maybe something else, right? Because each human being is different. Each human being has a different way of expressing their pain body. However, when I feel pain and I project that onto someone, it is going to be very difficult for someone not to drop into their pain body. Does that make sense? If I am in pain and I am feeling sad and unseen and I go into my screaming voice, my banshee voice, and I want to give this man a piece of my mind, even if he is out of line, the likelihood that we are going to be able to meet in the loving, the likelihood that we're going to be able to get to a place of breakthrough, the likelihood that we're actually going to be able to walk away from the conversation wanting to learn more about the other person is very small. Most likely, if I'm projecting my pain on someone, I'm only going to be creating more segregation. And I start with the issue of men shaming because I am a woman and I can speak from that place. And I can speak that I have man shamed. And I apologize for it. I've spoken poorly about men as a whole behind their back and I have intentionally cut them one-on-one -on -one in front of me because I was mad at a larger story that had not nothing to do with the person in front of me, but they triggered a larger story and I projected that story onto them. I apologize for that action. Man shaming. Now I want to go into a more difficult issue because it is the same structure. Now it's not the same issue. It's the same structure, the how of how it's being created. The individual feels pain. The person in front of them is triggering a larger story of that pain and therefore that individual's sh pain is projected onto the person in front of them. We call it white shaming in this situation with this scenario that I'm about to bring up and it makes my belly quake just talking about it because I present as a white woman. I have mostly European descendants and I do have some other descendants and naming them publicly has 
brought some backlash at different points, but I have Choctaw history, Native American family lineage, um, that's been really difficult to prove. And I've gotten so much interesting feedback, um, a lot of shaming in the Native American community, a lot of shaming in other communities, and it's hard for me to call out, just like it would be hard for a man to call out men shaming to women, because he would be identified as someone who's not taking responsibility, someone who's not looking at his own issues, someone who's not really understanding how women are hurt by men. I know the statistics. I know the statistics of minorities in this country. I know the statistics of how many white people are in power. I know the socioeconomic statistics. And I, as a presenting white woman, have made it part of my study, excuse me, to <clears throat> understand and be in solidarity with people of other backgrounds. And I have not always been the best at it. Um, I went to the United Nations University for Peace in 2014 as a student and really learned how poor I was at it actually and how much I still had to learn about what it's like to not be me, right? I think part of our spiritual journey is learning how to be ourselves, right? And another part of our spiritual journey, aka our life journey, is about learning how to be in empathy with other people. And at the United Nations University for Peace, I really got called out in a very intense way about my whiteness and about um, being an American and being a loud American who interrupts her teachers and doesn't let other people speak. And by no means was that my intention. And it happened a couple times and I really had to soften and I really had to look at the way that I was speaking, not only to my professors, but other students, um, students from other countries where the culture around professor to student relationship was very much more one of silence. And I came from a culture where you spoke up in order to be heard, whereas other people did not. And the combination of being, me being white and American had me get a lot of feedback and flack and a lot of shaming. I would say it was active shaming where people came up to me specifically and attacked my character as a person and blamed me for not knowing and to be in 100% honesty, I was fully ignorant. I had no idea that I was behaving in a way that would offend anyone. I was there wanting to learn. And I share this not saying that White people don't need to be put in their place once in a while. I come from a culture where we didn't talk about race. Even though I grew up in a very diverse culture, very diverse neighborhood, racism wasn't something we talked about. And I didn't really study it till I got to college. And even then, I was taking much more of a social activist role where I felt like I was an advocate for my friends of color. And I was in my, in my mind. And I got to learn that my behavior was still separatists, still otherizing, still um, keeping people out of the conversation. And so I speak about white shaming just as a question, right? I'm more curious for people of color, for friends in my life. I'm having this conversation one-on-one -on -one with people. This is the first time I'm going public. Um, so I'm not speaking to anyone specifically here. I'm not going to call anyone in on Facebook Live, but I would love to hear um, just how can we go about this conversation? I don't want to necessarily hear like, oh, I've been white shamed. Oh, I've been white shamed. That's not what this is. Um, and I don't even know if coining that term is a good idea. Um, I might get some, uh, I'll have to sit with that one with spirit. And like I said, I'm sharing all of this in the loving and as a question. I don't have the answers, but I do know that when I shame men, it shuts them down and we don't have any more conversation. And I've seen it happen in the communities of different races. People are shamed, they shut down, and then minds and hearts are not opened. And I'm really curious, how can we step forward and have a conversation that allows hearts and minds to open? This isn't about catering to people. This isn't about being nice to the white people because they can't handle it. This is about human beings. This is about stepping into the fact that we are equal. And coming from a place of not speaking only in my pain. It's a request. It's a curiosity. Is this even possible? I don't know. Is what I'm saying totally privileged because of who I am and how I grew up? Maybe. Maybe. But I have experienced that who we are 
as living beings is beyond gender, is beyond race, is beyond socioeconomic status. It's in the loving, it's spirit. And we come here to play a very important game, right? That has separation, that has different backgrounds, that has different approaches, that has different genders, that has this multiplicitous ego in order to figure out how to do it in this realm. One is not better than the other. They're both important games, but if we champion one or the, uh, over the other, we lose something. Right? We lose something. Giselle just made a really cool point. I try to speak out of my pain, but it's hard with PTSD. I'm wondering, Giselle, are you speaking specifically about like race issues or are you speaking about pain in general? Like speaking outside of your pain body is difficult with PTSD. If you want to answer that question, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, but what uh, that really brings forward a very good point of like, how do we work out of this pain body? Because this pain body is real too. The human experience is real in general. Cool. The human experience is real, right? The pain body is real. The ego is real. So is spirit. So is our infinite nature. And champion one over the other is what gets us in trouble saying that we are only human and that we have to focus on these issues that we have to focus on money that we have to focus on sex that we have to focus on gender that we have to focus on race that we have to focus on socioeconomic status the focus the have to focus on any of those and the ignoring of our oneness as spirit is incomplete and on the other side, only focusing on our oneness as spirit and not looking at the socioeconomic issues, the gender issues, the race issues, the world issues, not looking at the human experience and only looking at the spiritual experience is also problematic. It's also problematic. We get to hold the binaries. We get to hold these two somewhat seemingly separate bodies in one instant. We're human and we're spirit. I am a, a presenting white woman on March 12th, 2018. I hope it's the 12th. March 12th, 2018 on Monday, my moon day, my day when I don't plan anything. And I'm also infinite spirit that always has been and always will be. Ah, that's what I want to know. How to break these preconceptions that sometimes comes from every cell of our body. I mean, it's programming, right? We have entered into a culture that has a certain structure and we, as spirit, filtered in into our families, into our cultures, into our communities. And so we get to choose at certain points which pieces we want to believe. And at other points, we have to realize, oh my gosh, there are things inside of me that are programmed in and some things I don't even know. Just like my story at the United Nations University for Peace. If you're just coming on, I spoke about a story earlier when I went to the United Nations University for Peace as a master's student. I really had a difficult time because a lot of students were calling me out very strongly about my whiteness and about my Americanness and how I was very loud and how I would talk over people in class, but that was never my intention. And anyone who knows me that it knows that I champion communication and I even consider myself to be a good communicator, but I had to wake up to the things that I didn't know that I didn't know. And there comes a point within our insides that we have limiting beliefs and we need outside reflection to help us understand what it is that we don't know what we don't know, right? We don't have access to that other than conscious part of ourselves. We need help. And that's how I got into coaching in the first place was that someone helped me see what I didn't know that I didn't know. <sighs> that was a lot. <laughs> hmm. Ultimately, there's an equality in spirit that each one of us has, no matter what color, what gender, what race, what socioeconomic background, how much or how little money that you have, wherever you're at in the world, there is an equality of our spirit. There's an equality of our soul. That is who we are, ultimately. The identity in this lifetime is for ours to play with, this flesh puppet of bones and skin. It is a beautiful thing, but it is not who we are completely. We also don't want to deny it. We can have pride and excitement and joy and art to celebrate who we are and where we've come from and where we would like to go next in this dimension. But ultimately who we are in our infinite nature is equal because it's infinite. <laughs> if you like this, 
go ahead and share it. If you didn't, you can share it and leave a comment as to why you didn't like it. If you have a question or you want to get in contact with me, talk in the comments below. I'm not looking at my private messages, really. Um, I'm so glad you get it, Giselle. You're awesome. And, yeah, we have to walk this path very delicately. These are topics that are, I mean, I brought forward some serious-ish tonight. These are sacred topics that require a lot of tenderness that sometimes my fiery nature wants to jump onto a little bit more. And so I bring them forward with a lot of tenderness. And again, standing in the loving and in the inquiry. I don't know shit about shit. What I'm sharing is literally what's coming to me through me. So from an infinite source into a finite 32 year old presenting white woman with the experiences that I've had. And while they're multiplicitous and fun and colorful and deep and sacred, they're not all experiences. So I am not pretending to know everything here. And I would love to learn from you. Do you have an answer to something that was brought up tonight? Do you have something that's coming through you? Something that you're able to oracle or channel or that you can intuit or that you just know or that you have an experience of or that you want to be able to lay down in writing right here, right now? Go ahead and leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you about how this moves you. I'm getting some major love right now from Tumash. Thank you, brother. Um, a lot of you are just jumping on, and I'm just about to jump off. But this was a really powerful video, and I would love to hear your personal comment about what it is that I, that I spoke about tonight. And sharing is caring. Share this video if it moves you. Light to all, love to all, peace to all. Have a fabulous night. Love.